EASA, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. These two agencies are so popular that other countries simply follow their decisions. If a plane gets approved by EFAA, dozens of other countries from Brazil to Japan will accept it too. China understood this clearly. That's why in 2019, Beijing signed an aviation safety deal with the EU. The goal was to build a legal system for mutual recognition. If a Chinese plane like the C919 passed EASAS tests, it should get approval. China even went further, designing the using international Western-made parts to make sure it met every rule. The plan looked perfect. Build a jet that meets global rules, use trusted parts, follow the process, and get approval. So, the big question is, why didn't it work? Now let's look at the C919 itself. This is not some small homemade project. This is a jet created to meet global rules from the very start. Look at the engines. The C919 uses Leap 1C engines, built by General Electric and Saffron. This is the same engine family used on Airbus. It's at Tresto Ceroneo, one of the world's most popular planes. These engines are already approved by the FAA and EASA, but that's just the start. The C919's control systems are made by Honeywell, a leading American company. Its radar is from Rockwell Collins, another U.S. firm. Fuel systems from Parker Han, Batias, Michelin. All these companies have years of experience working with Boeing and Airbus. So here's the puzzle. If every part is already approved, and a plane is just a collection of those parts, why won't they approve the whole plane? It's like building a smartphone with certified parts Qualcomm chip, Samsung screen, Sony camera and being told it still needs years of tests just to sell it overseas. Not because it's unsafe, but because it's not made by Apple or Samsung. That's what's frustrating. Comac didn't cut corners. They followed the rule book and are still being told to wait maybe for another six years. And that starts to feel less like quality checks and more like a wall being built. So what's the real reason behind this? On paper, EASA says the delay is due to technical reasons. They argue that every plane, no matter where its parts come from, must be tested as a full system. That's partly true. But let's zoom out and see the bigger picture. This isn't the first time China followed global rules only to see the rules quietly change. Look at space cooperation. In 2014, China and the EU agreed to work together on deep space missions. European astronauts even went to China, trained at Chinese space centers, and learned Mandarin to prepare for missions on China's space station. Then suddenly in 2023, the European Space Agency pulled out, citing unclear political and money concerns. Years of planning gone, or think back to the early 2000s, China joined Europe's Galileo satellite navigation system. It followed all technical plans and invested heavily. But under pressure, mostly from the US, China was forced out. The result? China created its own system Beta which now competes with GPS. The funny thing? Galileo still isn't fully working. This is the pattern. China follows the rules. Then the rules change, whether it's satellites, space projects, or now commercial airplanes. The message stays the same. When China becomes a serious competitor, the rules get rewritten. And this is a big deal. The global airplane market is ruled by just two players Boeing and Airbus. Together, they own around 90% of the market. And now Comac, backed by the world's second largest economy, shows up with a plane that checks all the technical boxes. For the first time in decades, that duopoly is facing real competition. In t that light, the delay in approving the C919 doesn't look so fair anymore. It starts to feel like protectionalists about safety, more about staying on top. Now flip the question. Western critics often ask, who's going to buy the C919? But the truth is, the C919 already has a huge future, even without international approval. Start with this. China is expected to become the world's biggest aviation market by 2042. That's according to the International Air Transport Association. The forecast, over 9,000 new planes will be needed. That's about one-fourth of global demand. And Comasec only needs a portion of that to be successful. So even if the C919 never leaves China, it can still win. But China's not stopping there. Countries in Southeast Asia, like Vietnam, Malaysia, and Indonesia have already shown interest in the C919. Many are part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, and some are ready to accept Chinese aviation standards instead of waiting for Western approval. Now let's talk about Airbus, the so-called competitor that benefits from the delay. China is Airbus's biggest national customer. Since 2006, China has bought more planes from Airbus than from Boeing. Today, more than 2,200 Airbus jets fly in China, making up over half of the country's civil aviation fleet. Airbus even builds planes in China. Its factory in Tianjin builds around six aircraft a month, helping the company meet global demand. So, let's be honest. If China starts limiting access to its market, Airbus could lose just as much maybe more than Comacy. The idea that the C919 has no buyers is just not true. It ignores basic market facts. And those facts clearly favor China. China isn't waiting around. It's already taking action. First, engine independence. Right now, 
The C919 uses Leap 1C engines from GE and Saffron, but Comus is teaming up with AECC the Aero Engine Corporation of China to build a local engine, the CJ1000. If this works, it will be a game changer. It will remove a major Western-made part and break the link that keeps China tied to US and European approval. But that's not the only change. COMAC and Chinese aviation leaders are also creating a new global system through business and diplomacy. Some Belt and Road countries have signed deals to accept Chinese certified planes like the C919 without needing EASA or FAA approval. Then there's market pressure. China doesn't need to announce bans or loud policies, it can just quietly shift buying patterns. Imagine state-owned airlines choosing Comac jets over Airbus for local flights or slowing down big orders until approval times match. No big headlines, just quiet economic pressure. It's a slow smart push not out of anger, but out of- It focused on local innovation, and launched 5G phones with Chinese-made processors. Or Beidou China's GPS rival, created after being excluded from Galileo. These weren't just tech wins, they were powerful messages. And now, the C919 is on the same path. In the beginning, China tried to fit in used Western parts, followed the process, signed the deals. But when the goalposts moved, China didn't make noise. It shifted strategy. Now it's rebuilding its aviation system from scratch. New engines, new electronics, new rules, and new customers. The twist EASAS delay might speed that up. By holding back the C919, they might be pushing China to become even more independent and, maybe even stronger, and this isn't only about China, it's about a changing world. The future of aviation won't be decided only in Seattle or two. Cities like Shanghai, Tianjin, and Chengdu are stepping up. So if you think, it's just one plane, think again. The C919 is only the start, and the sky's about to get much busier. If this breakdown helped you understand things better, subscribe to the channel for more deep dives into tech, global strategy, and stories the main news often misses. The future's coming fast, and we'll be here to explain it. See you next time. Imagine this. A shiny, brand new passenger jet rolls out of a hangar in China. It's called the C919, China's reply to the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. Sleek, modern, and powered by some of the world's most advanced parts. Engines made together by General Electric and Saffron from France, avionics from Honeywell, landing gear from Collins Aerospace. Even the tires are made by Michelin. All major systems come from companies already trusted by both American and European regulators. But still, the plane can't fly internationally, not because it's dangerous, not because it failed safety checks, but because Europe's aviation regulator, EASA, recently said it won't approve the plane for another three to six years. That's a huge delay for a plane designed to meet global rules from the beginning. The headlines started rolling in. Some US news outlets laughed at the jet. They asked, what's the point? Nobody wants it anyway. But that's not the whole story. What's really going on isn't about safety rules or paperwork. It's about power, influence, and a serious fight over who will lead the future of air travel. And China's answer isn't what people expected. Let's step back and answer a basic question. Why is certification so important in aviation? In simple words, a type certificate is like a passport for airplanes. It's an official document. From a country's aviation agency saying, yes, this plane is safe to fly. Without it, the plane can't fly on commercial routes outside its home country. No certificate means no global flights, no exports, and no real business. Now here's where things get tricky. In aviation, two regulators lead the world. One is the FAA, or Federal Aviation Administration in the United States. The other is EASA, the European Union Aviation Safety Agency. These two agencies are so powerful that most other countries simply follow their decisions. If a plane gets approved by EASA or the FAA, dozens of other countries from Brazil to Japan will accept it too. China understood this clearly. That's why in 2019, Beijing signed an aviation safety deal with the EU. The goal was to build a legal system for mutual recognition. If a Chinese plane like the C919 passed EASAS tests, it should get approval. China even went further, designing the C919 using international Western-made parts to make sure it met every rule. The plan looked perfect. Build a jet that meets global rules, use trusted parts, follow the process, and get approval. So, the big question is, why didn't it work? Now let's look at the C919 itself. This is not some small homemade project. This is a jet created to meet global rules from the very start. Look at the engines. The C919 uses Leap 1C engines built by General Electric and Saffron. This is the same engine family used on Airbus. It's at Tres do Cero Neo, one of the world's most popular planes. These engines are already approved by the FAA and EASA, but that's just the start. The C919's control systems are made by Honeywell, a leading American company. Its radar is from Rockwell Collins, another US firm. 
fuel systems from Parker Han, Batias, Michelin. All these companies have years of experience working with Boeing and Airbus. So here's the puzzle. If every part is already approved, and a plane is just a collection of those parts, why won't they approve the whole plane? It's like building a smartphone with certified parts Qualcomm chip, Samsung screen, Sony camera and being told it still needs years of tests just to sell it overseas. Not because it's unsafe, but because it's not made by Apple or Samsung. That's what's frustrating. Comac didn't cut corners. They followed the rulebook and are still being told to wait maybe for another six years. And that starts to feel less like quality checks and more like a wall being built. So what's the real reason behind this? On paper, EASA says the delay is due to technical reasons. They argue that every plane, no matter where its parts come from, must be tested as a full system. That's partly true. But let's zoom out and see the bigger picture. This isn't the first time China followed global rules only to see the rules quietly change. Look at space cooperation. In 2014, China and the EU agreed to work together on deep space missions. European astronauts even went to China, trained at Chinese space centers, and learned Mandarin to prepare for missions on China's space station. Then suddenly in 2023, the European Space Agency pulled out, citing unclear political and money concerns. Years of planning gone, or think back to the early 2000s, China joined Europe's Galileo satellite navigation system. It followed all technical plans and invested heavily. But under pressure, mostly from the US, China was forced out. The result? China created its own system better which now competes with GPS. The funny thing? Galileo still isn't fully working. This is the pattern. China follows the rules. Then the rules change, whether it's satellites, space projects, or now commercial airplanes. The message stays the same. When China becomes a serious competitor,